Hi, this is Kevin Kelly. Today, I want to talk about the future of big bandwidth. We're going to need lots of bandwidth in the coming future to do all the things that we want to do. And among the most important technologies of big bandwidth is 5G. But also, there's the importance of fiber optic. And I want to talk about those two technologies today. So we need big bandwidth for all the things that we're going to want to do in our lives in the next 10 or 20 years. Um, we need it to play the kind of games we're going to be playing. We need it to use it for the mirror world of artificial reality. We need it for tele-remote surgery. We're going to need it for the high-definition video that we're going to be watching everywhere. We're going to need it to drive autonomous cars down the street. We're going to need big bandwidth to even service our homes and to um, do education in schools. So those are enough reasons to do a big bandwidth, but we're also entering into the world of big data. And big data needs big bandwidth. We can't do the kinds of things that we hope to do with big data unless we have big bandwidth. So the two of them are going to work together. So there's no real big data unless we also have big bandwidth. And I want to talk about those technologies of big bandwidth. And again, the most important of those is probably a technology you might have heard of called 5G. But 5G doesn't actually exist yet. It's more of an aspirational idea of where we want to aim to rather than anything that exists right now. So it's mostly in the laboratories. We have a roadmap of where we want to go to. But 5G is something that nobody has even really agreed what it is yet. That's how new it is. But we do have some hopes for it. And there are some ideas about what we want from this new technology called 5G. And the 5G, the way it works is that it's wireless. It's through radio waves. It doesn't need wires. It transmits through the air to our devices, in our homes, from anything that we're wearing. So it's a radio spectrum technology. And the idea of 5G is that it would be about 10 times as fast as 4G, what we have now in our smartphones, and that it has about one-tenth the latency, that it's very, very fast to respond, that, it, that a signal can go there and come back in one millisecond, which is very, very fast, which is really important for many of the kinds of things that we want to do, like if we have artificial reality, if we have magic glasses that let us act inside a virtual world, if we are trying to do surgery remotely, if we're trying to drive a car or have a computer driver car, it needs to have very low latency. One millisecond is the goal. The other thing is that we want to have it 100% available wherever we want, particularly in urban areas. We don't want any kind of dead spots because we want to have um, a completely uniform coverage. That's not true right now. There's lots of gaps or dead spaces, but for the kind of for this generation of technology and the things that we want, we want to have 100% coverage or 99% coverage. The other thing is we want to have 10 times or maybe 100 times as, as many devices and things connected. So this is part of the Internet of Things. So part of the 5G vision is that other things in phones are connected, that it, that it includes um, you know, chairs, appliances in the home, um, uh, wearables. All the other things besides your laptop and your phone are also going to be connected and so, and with, at high bandwidth. And so that is a much bigger vision because when you have 100 times as many devices as it is at present, than you have in 4G, that's a huge hurdle to overcome. And then there is also a part of the 5G spec um, that it'd be 90% less energy. So the idea is that you can do all these things and even reduce the amount of energy that we're using. Another part of it that's not really talked about very much is that we want to have this to be a symmetrical bandwidth. 
that however fast it is to download things, we also want to be able to upload at the same speed, which is not really true for a lot of the network right now. You want to have, be able to go both ways because we are imagining in this world that we are generating as much data as we actually consume. That in terms of our, uh, like in a, the mirror world where we have a, we have a, um, augmented reality and we're in participating that we're actually sending out almost as much data as we're receiving in. And so we want this uh, um, network to be going both ways with the same bandwidth in both directions. So that is the, the aspiration for 5G. And um, the way that people are kind of imagining it happening is that there's two sections of the spectrum that are candidates for making this happen. And then the first one, um, its bandwidth is very close to what's being used today in your um, cell phone, 4G or, or, or 3G. It's very close to that spectrum. It's very close, in fact, to the spectrum that's being used in cordless phones, in Wi-Fi, in um, even microwave ovens, uh, baby monitors, remote controlled airplanes. So it's, it's a very familiar spectrum. It's called sub six gigahertz. So it's below six gigahertz. It's between one and six gigahertz. It's the low gigahertz band. And we have a lot of technology already kind of implemented for that. And even though the the spectrum will be a little bit different. It's close to that. And so we know how to do that in, in sense. And we, we have uh, infrastructure that we can modify to make that work. The disadvantages of that is that um, it doesn't carry as much information as another band. And that second band is called millimeter wavelength. It's between 30 and 300 gigahertz. So it's a much um, it's a much smaller wavelength centimeters. Actually, it's um, uh, uh, excuse me. It's, it's it's a much um, longer wavelength, and so um, it is uh, in, in an area of the bandwidth that's not used very much right now. And the problem is is that. Um, it doesn't travel very far. It's easily interrupted. And so this second band that you were thinking of for 5G has a problem in that it mist and snow and rain will stop it and even has trouble going through buildings, which is a real problem if you are on a phone or having wearables or you're trying to do something inside because this signal is not going to reach you. And it doesn't travel very far, even in the best circumstances. It has maybe a 200 meter radius, whereas the earlier spectrum I talked about that being used right now, the sub six gigahertz, that low band thing, that has a kilometer, a thousand meters. So it's a much, you need fewer stations to cover something. You need something every kilometer, a tower every, an antenna every kilometer, but this new millimeter versions, you need an antenna every 200 meters. Very, very densely populated with antennas. And um, so that's a, that's, a, that's a whole new infrastructure that we would require to make this 5G work using that kind of frequency. So it doesn't exist and we'd have to make it. There's problems in it because it, it's very short range and um, it is um, uh, easily interrupted. Um, and when you also start to pack antennas that close together, there's a lot more interference with each other. So if you can imagine a city and you have an antenna every couple hundred meters, those signals are all ricocheting around and it requires a special kind of computation and advanced mathematics to unravel them. And one of the ways to unravel them is they actually have multiple antennas instead of just one antenna. They have multiple antennas and they basically try to focus an individual beam. It's called um, MIMO and beam focusing. And so there's additional technologies that are required to work in this new 5G millimeter area. All that means that it's gonna be many, many years before this is decided 
and then if, before it's built. So that kind of technology, even though people are talking about 5G, is not going to be present in one or two years, maybe not even three to five years. That's a very far off time before that will happen. The sub six, the, the more immediate version, could happen very rapidly, but it doesn't offer the same kind of change and advantages that I talked about in the beginning. So those changes, those additional benefits will be fewer, but it'll be sooner. So 5G is probably a technology that will take a decade or more to really unfold in its promises. There's gonna be a lot of hype about it in the beginning, and it'll have some few advantages, but all those advantages I talked about, 10 times the speed, one millisecond latency, they all require probably the second version of this. So, 5G, I think, is a little, it's going to be a little confusing because in the beginning it may not give this radical disruptive difference that people are expecting. There's another issue about these two different bands, and that is the, uh, the close bands, the ones in the sub six, the low sub six gigahertz, between one and six gigahertz. Those bands, the ones that, that, that we want to do 5G on, in most of the world, they're kind of open. They're being used somewhat right now. They can, can, they can kind of be reserved or set aside or changed for 5G. But in the U.S., those bands are owned by the Department of Defense. They're military bands. And the military is using them to some extent, and they don't want to give them up. And they much prefer that those millimeter bands, those new bands that aren't been developed yet, be used for 5G. And um, most of the world, the rest of the world, China, Huawei in particular, are going with the sub-6 bands, the low ones, the ones that are kind of currently near being the ones that we use now. And that means that there may be a, a little bit of a schism, a little bit of a division, a little bit of a decision about which way people want to go. because. Um, the U.S. officially is favoring these new millimeter bands that aren't being utilized anywhere else, in part because they're very hard to use, that may have more potential in the long run. And China and the rest of the world is favoring the sub-low bands. And so there's kind of a little bit of a, of a tussle going on right now about which way will the 5G go? It hasn't really been decided yet, and is it possible that we may have chips developed that we use both bands? Particularly as we see that in kind of evolutionary terms, where maybe there's chips where sometimes you use the existing sub-6 bands, which are easily done, and then other times you may automatically, seamlessly transfer to these other bands because they can carry more data and they aren't anything else near them being used, so less interference. So that's one vision, is where we have multiple bands being used in 5G. But that's only part of the story, this wireless part, the 5G part. It's important to understand that we can't really have this wireless world unless there's a wired world underneath. That backbone is fiber optic. So the more f wireless we have, the more of a need there is to connect those wire points together and to do it very fast. So you can't really have like a 10 gigabits per second connection through 5G, which is what we hope to have, if there isn't also a 5G per second connection with the wired world connecting all these data servers together. So the cloud that you hear about, the cloud is composed of these two parts. It's the 5G wireless cloud that is behind and connected to the fiber optic cloud that connects all the servers together. And they go along the ground, or under the ground, or under the ocean, connecting all these points together into one unified cloud. And that fiber optic is also undergoing technological change where we're able to put more and more speed and lower latency and um, energy reduction into these connections. 
But we actually still need to have a lot to do to bring those fibers right to the homes because in the end, even if you have 5G in your home, it's being connected through a fiber optic cable to the rest of the cloud. And that connection has not happened. That's, that's happening very, very slow. Um, and it's expensive to do because you have to replace all the copper wires with fiber optic uh, cables. But the promise is that we have the same kind of connection speed that we have in the air. We could have under the ground, under the ocean, across um, great distances because the signals 5G, even at their best, don't go more than a kilometer in their range. And so we need to collect around the world. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what we have. And, and by the way, um, part of the 5G vision is also that it goes to your car. So we have these, whether you're driving the car yourself or you have a computer-driven, auto-driven car that's driving itself, your car is going to have more bandwidth to it than probably to your home. One is just to steer it and make sure that it's safe and that it can navigate, but also because while you're in the car, if you're not driving, you're basically going to be connected to the cloud. You're going to be using internet, you're going to be watching movies, you're going to be doing virtual reality, you're going to be augmented reality, you're, be, you're going to be connecting at a very, very high bandwidth as you move along. So the cars become these huge nodes of connection that will probably have more bandwidth connected to them than even to your home. So what we have from this is we have the idea of a cloud, a global cloud that is primarily connected with fiber optic cables between most of the points, including to every building and every home and um, every important structure will be connected with fiber optic cables. And that backbone connects to this 5G cloud of wireless connection, okay? And what's interesting is that the wireless world and the world of our own smartphones and laptops is a world of electrons. There are electrons that are moving around and being used to be being manipulated by logic gates and computer chips. And the world of this connection, long-term backbone is photons or photons flowing through these glass fibers. So we have this need to work in electrons and then shift to photons and then back to electrons. And that interface between the electrons and the photons is very, very difficult to do and very messy and inefficient. We don't really have photon chips yet. We don't really have a good photon electron interface. We don't really have a good way to move electrons into photons and photons back into electrons very easily. And that's a huge opportunity for people who are wanting to do basic research for the new crop of technologies that will be valuable in 10 years or 20 years. And that's figuring out ways to make it much more seamless between photons and electrons, to actually make solid state silicon chips that can produce photons or that can manipulate photons. That isn't really very possible right now, but that is real the future technologies that will become more and more important because this cloud that I'm talking about is half electrons and half photons. And we need much better technologies that unify those two together because being in the cloud means moving from electrons to photons all the time. So to reiterate, the, my vision for this big bandwidth is that we are entering in a world where we need big bandwidth because we're transmitting big data, we're generating big data, and the two key technologies are 5G, which is an unagreed upon new specification for wireless. We don't even know exactly, we haven't really even agreed on what it is, but we have agreed on what we hope it could be. 
And the other one is, is this fiber optic technology, which is going very, very fast. And the future is the interface between electrons and photons. So um, I hope that's helpful to you. And um, I hope that you take advantage of these great opportunities and make our future for us. Thank you.